with the rapid adoption of OpenStack in the telco world with the SDN and NFV uh, getting more and more powerful, it has become a necessity to have multiple open stacks and not just um, have a single open stack instance and be enough. So with that, we are going to talk about a specific use case today. HP and Nuage Networks have come up with a comprehensive solution to deal with this complex problem of multi data center integration. I am Nayana and I work as an architect in Helion Carrier Grade in the NFV division of HP Enterprise. The use case we are going to see today, for example, I have shown here two data centers, DC1 and DC2. There are multiple regions in each data center with the OpenStack instance, for example, KVM region and ESX region. Similarly, the other data center shows a KVM region and a bare metal. So with multi-hypervisors and bare metal integration, there are lots of complexities for connectivity between these two. And with this particular use case, we are going to show how we have solved this problem, whereby the VM1 and VM2 in the first data center not only are able to talk to each other, but also are able to talk to the other data center VMs and also bare metals. With the communication service providers, there are lots of challenges. With current limitation uh, in technology and some of the complexities of the use cases, we will see few of them which are relevant to this use case. With HPE's Helion Carrier Gate solution, we have a powerful SDN capabilities which help to solve some of these intricacies. Then we'll see the actual use case of the multi data center with some of the uh, details on the configuration and connectivity as such. We'll go over some of the highlights of this solution for the use case and that will uh, we'll cover with the benefits not only just for this use case, but some other use cases as well. So let's look at some of the challenges that CSPs have today. With current limitation, the silo OpenStack instances in a single data center, that's not sufficient to solve all the problems. So the challenge for the CSPs is how to integrate a complex setup with multiple data centers. Not two, but multiple. Today the Neutron can manage the local network and its IPs. In case of multi data center, CSPs need to have a unified view of all the networks from multiple data centers as well as be able to manage all the IPs. The L2 and L3 networks today are confined to the local OpenStack. But with this solution, we are going to show how this challenge of integrating and extending the L2, L3 is solved. There are definitely existing VLANs and legacy, uh, legacy equipment in the data centers which is valuable and with the cloudification, we want to make sure that this VXLAN networks are able to talk to this legacy equipment. So that is another challenge of VXLAN, VLAN connectivity. The security groups that we have today 
are able to scope only for that OpenStack instance. But in this particular case, we need to have a solution which can span across the data centers. With all these complexities, of course, uh, the OPEX is a major challenge for, for the uh, CSPs. And how this solution will reduce the OPEX, we are going to see that in a while. This is only about the networking that I talked about. But the basic fundamental requirements of the carrier grade availability, performance, and I think uh, earlier Madhu had a session uh, where he showed all about the uh, tests that they performed on getting, uh, getting this performance boost. <coughs> Similarly, a single vendor lock-in is a problem, and CSPs want to solve that. So with this solution that we have today, we can coexist with other vendors with their open stack, and the SDN can solve the problem of talking to multiple WIMPs. So pertaining to this solution, let's look at some of the um, capabilities of the SDN that we have used in the solution. HP has an offering called DCN, which is the distributed cloud networking. And it's a SDN solution which solves the virtualization of networks and, as we mentioned earlier, talking to the multiple uh, instances of OpenStack. DCN comes as a virtualized services platform. It has three major components, VSD. VSD is a network policy engine, and it also has analytics or all the statistics from the networks that is collected that can be used by analytics software. The second important component is the VSC, which is the SDN controller. And this has the rich capability of uh, connecting to the VSD for all the handshake and be able to route for the networks. The VRS component is the one that's, that is residing in each hypervisor of the compute. And that does the distributed virtual routing for L2 to L4 rules. There is an offering from HP, which is the 5930 top of the rack switch. And with the integration with those switches, we have also been able to connect to the bare metals with this integration. Let's look at few of uh, these um, constructs uh, to help uh, understand the uh, solution a little better. Uh, so there are four constructs here. One is called the domain. This domain is, uh, L3 domain is equivalent to a router. Under the L3 domain, you have something called zone. And this zone is something where you can have multiple subnets and a security policy that you can establish on this zone is the, all the network uh, endpoints will adhere to that policy. Subnet is, of course, the L2 uh, segment with the same broadcast domain. And the security policies, there is a way to have different security rules and put them together as a single policy. You can also create a template of these security policies, and that helps in terms of automation. Talking about the security policies, there are few important ones I have listed here. There is an ingress and egress policy, so which which controls the traffic from exiting the network and entering the network. 
then there is a redirect target which helps in terms of steering the traffic to a specific port. For example, if there is a firewall and you do not want two different networks to talk to each other directly, but going through firewall so that there, the firewall can control the traffic depending on the rule set, you can use a redirect target there. That also helps in this uh, service function chaining. The forwarding policy helps to work along with the redirect target to steer the traffic within the cloud and also outside the cloud. These different policies can be grouped together in a policy group which helps to consolidate certain ordering and certain level of uh, traffic rules. With the DCN integration, the important use case today we are going to see is the multi data center integration which works with the SDN controllers talking to each other through the BGP Border Gateway Protocol Federation. Without this solution, if the virtual machines or, the, um, or any uh, legacy equipment, if they have to talk to each other from the data centers, then they uh, use the floating IPs for cloud. But floating IPs for CSP especially, they become very expensive soon. And with that kind of scale, it's not easy to go with FIP for all the traffic because the security uh, aspect comes into picture. And that's why the solution with all the security policies that you can set in uh, helps to overcome that problem. With, uh, with this integration and a rich functionality of all the automation and the REST APIs, it helps to do the provisioning and deployment very quickly uh, and also set all the security rules. With the service function chaining we saw earlier, uh, which can be used in firewall as well as load balancer, we did a third party integration with uh, Palo Alto Networks firewall and also Fortinet, as well as for load balancer, we used F5 networks. With the uh, 5930 switches, there is a OVSDB integration, which allows the hardware VTAP, and through that, the bare metal integration becomes easier. There is an operational tool set to help manage both underlay and overlay networks. This SDN solution with the DCN offering shines in hybrid environments, especially when we have seen earlier that you have ESX region, you have KVM region, as well as you have bare metal and some legacy equipments with VLANs. All of those can connect to each other with the custom made security policies that you put in place. And it also helps us to coexist with other OpenStack vendors or other VIMs. The um, other use case was about the IPAM. For IPAM, we used a third party uh, software for, uh, from Infoblox and be able to not only use the IPAM for just VertIO, but also non-VertIO connectivities for the SRIOV and PCA pass-through. So let's look at the uh, specific solution for this use case. If you see in this, um, picture, you will see the Helion OpenStack carrier grade with all the core services from OpenStack such as compute, networking, storage and security. There is a DCN plugin which is a Neutron ML2 driver which helps 
to coexist with the SRIOE driver, for example. The VSD in this case, which is the policy engine, is connected to the VSC, which is the SDN controller, through XMPP protocol. Multiple VSCs are meant for, of course, HA functionality, as well as in case of multi data center, you will have uh, more than two, maybe four, more, maybe six, depending on the need, and they will be able to talk to each other through BGP. As mentioned earlier, the VRS resides on each hypervisor, each compute, and that does the routing and switching function. The VRS talks to the controller through OpenFlow. There is a VSD dashboard which allows administrators to uh, have a visual on the network connectivity, different domains, zones, what security policies, as well as for automation and orchestration, they have REST APIs. So this REST API layer, which is the northbound, can be used by the orchestrator uh, software. HP has an offering called NFVD, which is NFV director. And we have done a successful POC with customers uh, using the orchestrator all the way till uh, from this integration to offer the SDN NFV solution. So this is the same picture that I had shown in the beginning, where the question here is the connectivity within the data center, within the OpenStack instance, and then the connectivity across the data center. Not only for the same uh, hypervisor, but multiple hypervisors, as well as the legacy VLANs and bare metal. So uh, this is uh, one specific um, diagram showing two data centers. And here, there is a VSD, which is a common VSD for both of these data centers. So depending on the scale and the practical aspects, you pick one data center to install uh, the VSD. And normally for production, we always suggest that it be done uh, in a HA fashion. So here you will see uh, there is a 3 plus 1 cluster of VSD. And uh, there is a northbound REST API, as we discussed earlier, which is used by the NFV director in this case. The two, um, the two boxes that you are seeing are basically two different OpenStack instances uh, in different data centers. And the VSC, which is the controller, uh, will be also in HA pair. Uh, in both the data centers. And that VSC will talk to its individual uh, computes on that specific uh, OpenStack instance. And uh, they, there has to be a connectivity established ahead of time for both the data centers for the IP connectivity. And uh, once that is done through the uh, configuration and the software integration, we are able to uh, uh, we are able to demonstrate that the VMs and the bare metals can talk to each other without using floating IP. So this is a similar picture, but with little bit of more details in terms of connectivity. You will see that the common VSD here has three plus one cluster. It uses MySQL database internally. And the, the plus one is meant for the statistics. So all the statistics and analytical, analytical data is collected in this uh, specific node. And that can be used by uh, the analytics software for data mining and such. The two data centers that you will see here There is, a, there is a pair of VSCs, which is in yellow color. So those are because of the HA pair. 
and similarly data center 2 has two VSCs. You will see two computes at the bottom and these two computes as you can see are uh, having redundant connectivity to each VSCs. So at each level we have made sure that HA is Excuse me. Okay. Uh, at each level, uh, HA is configured. Also, at the port level and the NIC level, there is a bonding that is used. There is another pair of uh, servers that you can see called VRSG. VRSG is a software gateway that is used for the external connectivity with the cloud for the floating IPs. There is also another flavor of the solution where the VRSGs which are the software gateway are replaced by the 5930s which is the hardware VTAP gateway and you can use it that way too. As you can see each VSC is connected to the other VSC in the same data center as well as it is connected to the other two VSCs in the other data center. So there is enough redundancy there as well. And each VSC talks to each other and being configured as a BGP pair. The multi-data center configuration the basic requirement is that these two data centers need to have IP connectivity. One of the data centers, a VSD is deployed with a HA 3 plus 1. Helion carrier grade instances of OpenStack individually in each data center. You can have one or multiple OpenStack instances as well. And it can also have a different uh, vendor OpenStack instance. As far as it can talk to the DCN, it will work. So there is a supportability matrix well published. There are, of course, necessary route entries need to be done as part of the configuration on the VSC as well as the v uh, all the VRS, which are the compute nodes. All of the uh, all of the VSCs, which are the controllers, are configured with the common VSD, which is the policy engine. And there is a specific BGP configuration that needs to be done so each VSC can talk to the other peer. With the Helion carrier grid, we also have solved few other use cases such as the firewall as a service. As mentioned earlier, with a firewall as a service, we have done some integration with third party. And uh, that way, we don't have to uh, work with specialized hardware. We can use it as a uh, firewall as a service anytime on the cloud. Similarly, the load balancer is done with the FI networks integration and IPAM with the info blocks. Let's look at some of the solution highlights from Helion Carrier Grid. It has a deployer or a lifecycle manager called HLM. The administrator can use and define their cloud and do all the configuration management ahead of time and have a lot of flexibility in terms of how uh, the cloud is defined. We have seen earlier that high availability as well as for demo or for test uh, QA purpose, you can have a single uh, component uh, deployment. The multi-tenancy, multi-region and multi-hypervisor is all, all uh, solved through this solution. Bare metal integration is done. Uh, with the life cycle operations, upgradability is 
available. Some of the carrier grade features which are important for CSPs such as availability, performance through SRIOV and PCI pass through. And there was a session just before this uh, which where they talked about all the performance characteristics and benchmarking. Fault detection and recovery is very important for CSPs and especially uh, low latency uh, detection and uh, recovery. Live migration, uh, host evacuation are all part of that. We have already seen some of the DCN capabilities, so I'll just go over it quickly here. It has a neutron ML2 driver which can coexist with other drivers such as uh, SRIOV. Uh, we saw the multi DC use case in detail. Uh, 5930 integration allows the OVSDB and some of the DHCP functionality. It also helps the orchestrator to directly talk to the switch and be able to automate and orchestrate that. VXLAN and VLAN connectivity is established through that and there are rich security policies. So this is a block diagram for, for how the Helion carrier grid looks like. Here you will see at the bottom you have some of the common services which are like monitoring, logging and fault management. Then there is a HLM which is the deployer. At the top you will see there are shared services which are core services uh, for uh, Keystone. There is some LDAP integration involved. Uh, you also have Horizon and other services as well. For backend storage we use 3PAR and left hand networks. For Neutron, you have seen that we have the DC, uh, DC and ML2 plugin and SRIOV plugin, and we have done some third party integrations with IPAM, InfoBlox, also Firewall. The middle uh, layer, you will see that these are different regions for the hypervisors and bare metal. So there is a KVM, ESX, and bare metal. On KVM and ESX hypervisors, there is a flavor of VRS for the routing function that resides on each. So when I talked about the HLM and being flexible uh, in terms of deployment, you have uh, four different ways you can deploy the uh, OpenStack. One with the single uh, region, there is no DCN involved there. This is a single uh, uh, AVS kind of computes. Then the other three comes with the DCN integration. One can come with just KVM region. You can also have KVM and ESX region. And the third you could have KVM, ESX and bare metal. So there is a lot of flexibility that is available for the administrator. Depending on the use case and the need, they can choose to deploy. What happened here? Sorry about that. All right. Uh, so some of the carrier grade key capabilities uh, we have seen. Um, some of them we uh, talked about in the earlier session, but I'll just uh, cap here. Uh, there is no single point of failure. So we have made sure we have HA at each level, including the ports, uh, the computes, the controllers, as well as the connectivity. At the data plane uh, performance, we have seen that we get a line rate, near line rate, uh, uh, throughput and uh, from manageability uh, perspective there is a hitless upgrade 
as well as uh, the performance management through silometer and heat. There is advanced resource scheduling, which helps to boost the performance and uh, for the administrator to be able to do um, you know, things ahead of time. So these are some of the um, solution benefits that we have seen. There is a HLM, which is meant for deployment and flexibility and uh, life cycle operations. Uh, the DCN capabilities, which is our SDN solution uh, to give the multi-DC deployment, some service function chaining and security policies. Carrier grade capabilities for availability, performance and manageability. And overall, to reduce the OPEX with this SDN and NFE automation and orchestration. There are some carrier grade proof points, which Madhu and uh, Eddie has already talked about earlier. We have done some comparison with the standard OpenStack on Linux versus the carrier grade OpenStack that we have. For example, if you see the detection of the failed VM can happen very quickly within 500 milliseconds compared to more than a minute. Similarly, for the compute node failures. The control node failures, we have HA, and that helps to get the, um, the failure detection very quickly within 25 seconds. Then there is a live migration DPDK apps that gives 200 milliseconds time, as well as any kind of detection of the link happens within 50 milliseconds, but we don't have uh, proof data for the uh, standard open stack at this time. So with this, we have seen earlier in the beginning that there are some challenges that CSPs have for this complex multi-data integration for automation and network orchestration availability and performance, multi-data center deployments, and the DCN capabilities. And with HP's Helion carrier grid, we are able to solve that through the HCG, DCN, and NFVD integration. We have done the carrier grid hardening on the, on the OpenStack instance. We have seen uh, multi-data center deployment as a use case today. And in the SDN capabilities allow the network to be extended to the other data center. So it can talk to the VMs as if they are on the same L2 domain. So with that, it's the same, um, uh, same slide that we started with. With the solution, we are able to get the connectivity within and across the data centers. And thank you. So, are there any questions? Could you comment on the scalability? of the solution, how many VMs or how many hypervisors you might be able to control under one of the um, VSDs? Okay, so uh, as far as uh, Helion carrier grade is concerned, we have gone to scale of 50 computes, 50 hypervisors on the KVM side, and you can have similarly on the ESX side. Now, as far as the deployment is concerned, since ESX is a third party, uh, we will use the existing uh, ESX deployment that you already have, and we will have this integration and uh, some of the components that we have to install to get the integration done with the configuration on the ESX side. Okay. So 50 hypervisors? 50 uh, on the KVM side, yes. Okay. And then you can also have bare metals, which are your existing VLANs. Uh, so uh, you can have multiple regions. For example, if you, in, the, in our next release, 
we are going to allow up to 200 nodes. Thank you. Hi. You mentioned in the uh, two data centers case that uh, common VSD is deployed on in one of those data centers. Yes. Um, does that not create a single geographic point of failure on that data center? I mean, if something were to happen to that one data center and the entire thing was taken out of action, then so very how good could I question. configure the network on the other one? Right. So it's a very good question. And that's why in the diagram you must have seen that there is a HA, which is a 3 plus 1 cluster. Uh, you can also have this cluster uh, geo-distant. So if you want to have two uh, servers on one data center and two on the other, that's allowed as well. That's a more of a deployment choice. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Nana, for sharing your experience around this. Uh, quick question. Uh, it seems like in this particular use case which you represented, the VRS was still at layer 2, layer 3, VXLAN, VLAN. Have you looked at extending BGP or MPLS all the way down to your VRS? and how that can happen, because that's a pretty important use case when it comes to CSP. Ah, okay. Um, so uh, as, as of current uh, release, uh, we have not, but we will definitely take that input and look into it. So my question is more around the, um, the DCN extensibility and pluggability. So VSP obviously is a new Azure Networks architecture. Uh, is HP looking to expand this to support, validate, and test other vendors' data center architectures, such as Cisco, Big Switch, and others? Or are they pretty much partnering with uh, Nuage on, on this solution? So, so today with the SDN, SDN integration that you have seen, it is with uh, Nuage Networks. Uh, we do have a 5930s as one of the switch uh, offered today for this integration. Uh, but we are looking into uh, offering the support for a uh, few other uh, switches as well. Uh, but it is in the future. But just these switches, not the actual overall SDN controller and, and underlying guts underneath. Uh, so, so today in the current release, we have a DCN as one of the options. In the next release, we are going to have another SDN uh, option, which is called Context Stream. Uh, so we, slowly we will expand. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, can you tell us how you handle the production upgrades and rollbacks? So, uh, so the uh, usually uh, for the KVM region, there is a, a in-place upgrade uh, story that is being worked on today. And uh, for the DCN upgrades, there since they are all in HA pairs for the production, uh, you always do uh, one at a time. So, it, so you do, uh, for example, one VSE you upgrade and uh, then fall back to the other and then do the other one. So, it's 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 in. Uh, one at a time. But is it manually managed by the uh, by the personnel who's doing the upgrade, or is that something baked into your product that you say upgrade and then it goes and upgrades it in such right. an order that the outages are prevented? Right. So, so today for the DCN, uh, we have uh, manual uh, instructions for upgrading, but we are working on the automatic upgrade in the next release. Uh, what is the maximum data center size you support uh, with one instance of helium? Uh, so how as many, I how many compute? I'm sorry if I missed that. Okay, one. so uh, he asked the same question earlier. In the current release, we have 50 compute nodes on the KVM region. You can have uh, bare metals uh, and existing e equipment which is c just connected, uh, as well as um, on the next release, we are increasing that to 200 nodes. HP has been continuously changing the reference hardware for the Halion to be certified. What is the current hardware briefly? Is it C7000 based or HP DL series based? So, so we, we have uh, both DL360, 380s, Gen 9, and also the um, Blade servers. Okay, for, yeah. for the Blades, there's a possibility to use the virtual connects modules like a top of rack, but there are no ML2 plugins published by HP. And I know you guys have inside of your solution, there are ML2 plugins. Are you guys planning to upstream those? Thank you. Um, so as far as the ML2 uh, is concerned, it is already upstream for, from, from Nuage. It's already upstream. 
uh, not for the VTEP, but for the neutron. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.